The Microscopic Trout and the Machiavellian Fisherman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A fisher was casting his flies in a brook, according to laws of such sciences, with a patented reel and a patented hook, and the thirty-fifth cast, which he vowed was the last, it was figured as close as a decimal, brought suddenly out of the water a trout of measurements infinitesimal. The fish had a way that would win him a place in the best and most polished society, and he looked at the fisherman full in the face with a visible air of anxiety. He murmured, Alas! from his place in the grass, and then, when he twisted and wriggled, he remarked in a pet that his heart was upset, and digestion all higgly-piggly. I request, he observed, to be instantly flung once again in the pool I've been living in. The fisherman said, You will tire out your tongue. Do you see any signs of my giving in? Put you back in the pool? Why, you fatuous fool! I've eaten much smaller and thinner fish. You're not a salmon or a sole, but I think on the whole you're a fairly respectable dinner fish. The fisherman's cook tried her hand on the trout, and with various herbs she embellished him. He was lovely to see, and there isn't a doubt that the fisherman's family relished him. And to prove that they did, both his wife and his kid devoured the trout with much eagerness, avowing no dish could compare with that fish, notwithstanding his singular meagerness. And the moral, you'll find, is, although it is kind to grant favors that people are wishing for, still a dinner you'll lack if you chance to throw back in the pool little trout that you're fishing for. If they're pleading you spurn, you will certainly learn that herbs will deliciously vary em. It is needless to state that a trout on a plate beats several in the aquarium. End of the Microscopic Trout and the Machiavellian Fisherman